Hello, everybody. Scott Taylor, the Data Whisperer, here in Orlando at the most magical place on Earth, the Gartner Data and Analytics Summit. Today, I'll be visiting the folks at Snowplow, talking with Yali Sassoon, their CTO and co-founder. Let's hear what he has to say. How are you, Yali? Nice to see you. I'm good. Nice to see you. So tell us just real quickly, what does Snowplow do? Snowplow technology is used by companies to collect behavioral data. It's the data that describes what their customers are doing on their websites, on their applications mobile devices, set-top boxes, that sort of thing, and deliver that data into the enterprise's data warehouse, event streams, where it can be used to power different analytics use cases and different AI use cases, both kind of machine learning and agentic. Oh, wonderful. So really collecting all that kind of activity from a customer side. And do people tend to map that to other data they have about those same... People? Yes, yeah, absolutely. That. So that data is incredibly valuable. It describes the decisions that people are making and how actually they make those decisions. So it's really great if you want to make predictions about what those people are going to make. We want to figure out what actions you should be taking as an organization to drive them uh, to make certain decisions rather than other decisions. But the data gets more and more valuable when you combine it with other customer data sets. So nearly all our customers are uh, are integrating that data in their snowflakes and their data bricks is into customer 360 and then using that to, to, to power their different use cases. What type of sectors, I mean, which types of enterprises find the most value out of this? You need to be a kind of a, a business with a big digital footprint, but that is most businesses today. Retail is an obvious example. Media is another obvious example. Financial services, like most of us engaging with our banks, mostly through digital channel these days, B2B companies, SaaS companies will use our technology to understand how they're acquiring customers and how their customers are engaging with their SaaS products. Oh, time. interesting. So it really gets uh, deep into what that decision process is and helps them guide through that customer journey, whether it's a consumer or a, a B2B business. situation. Yeah, if you're a collaboration tool provider, you can actually use the dates to see how different teams and your customers are using your technology to work together to solve solve problems. Like I'm, I'm a data guy by training, and the, the, the data is amazing. The stories you can tell with it are just uh, phenomenal. I'm, not, I'm a storyteller, too, from way back. Any particular anecdote or, or story you could talk about in a real-world sense from a client? So a really nice example is Autotrader. They're the, the UK's largest car, car marketplace and actually one of the largest online services in, in the UK. They implemented our technology quite a few years ago now. Again, starting with analytics use cases, they're a public company and they, they needed a pipeline that could scale to report a set of metrics around full page ads and some other advertising related metrics that they were computing on, on our data. So that was, that was really the start. But once they had that foundational technology in place, the ability to collect very granular customer data, they're a marketplace. They, they implemented our technology to collect data about the people who were buying cars mm -hmm. and also the dealers that were that were selling the cars so they had a team mining the data on the consumer side looking at what those journeys were like and optimizing them and also a team looking at the experience for dealers uh, and then trying to optimize the experience for them and what's happened in the years since is they've built more and more different ai models to power different applications to support both those different journeys uh so one of the recent applications that they built powers a new service. Uh, when you search on their site as a consumer for a different car, they provide search results. But a bit like Google, they also provide sponsored results on the site. And also like Google, they have an algorithm that tries to figure out which ads are most likely to be interesting to this user right now. And our, that algorithm is powered by our data. And it's, it, it, it's so effective, the click-through rates on those ads are so are so high that that's now a significant revenue stream for auto traders so it's a really nice example of a company going from using this data to help humans make better decisions around where to advertise or how to optimize parts of the journey to actually driving a whole new revenue stream based on ai better connecting uh, buyers and sellers of cars. Beautiful, beautiful story there. So not a lot of people could talk about that. So almost direct monetization. It's a really so, nice example of, uh, of monetizing data. It sounds like you've got some great partnership customer relations there where they really bring you in and probably- Oh, we really do. We, we've got some brilliant customers. It's, it's, a, it's a thing I enjoy most. There's some amazing data teams, some amazing minds, and it's, yeah, it's a joy learning from them. Mm -hmm. Gets to do that every day. But what do you see on the horizon for you and, and for the team and where Snowflow is going to go? So we're going to move from this kind of this, this, I'd say like relatively stable few years of helping our customers 
power the same sort of set of applications, attribution, recommendation, personalization, personalized search, and others into, I think, this very creative, very innovative, very disruptive phase where retailers and media companies and financial services companies reinvent the customer experience in quite fundamental ways with agents. Uh, and that means for us, we need to be collecting lots more data from all these agents. We, we, we need to help our customers not just understand the behavior of their customers, but the behavior of all the agents that are working on their behalf to engage the customer and deliver a holistic customer experience. So the, the, the data gets a lot more complicated and the journeys it describes gets a lot more complicated. And then we've got to think about how to help our customers get that data into a format, think things like knowledge graphs and so on that are then easy for the data agents to take and consume and deliver better customer journeys. So it's going to be a really interesting few years. There's going to be a lot of innovation. There's going to be a lot of disruption. There's going to be some really interesting new patterns emerge. It's, it's, yes, it's going to be a really exciting time. It's in an data. exciting time to be in data. We always say that, but this time really feels like. Yeah, this is even more beliefs. exciting than the last time. I mean, it's but, fun. It's, a, it's never boring in data, that's no, for no. sure. But it, it, it's just getting more and more interesting. Well, wonderful, y'all. Great to talk to you. Thanks for all your thoughts. Thank you, Scoop. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Scott Taylor, the Data Whisperer, here with the folks at Snowplow, and we'll see you next time.